Ooh, a little bit. I can tell you a little bit about it. The first jazz record I bought, uh, and I don't remember the title, but it was by a great saxophonist by the name of Benny Carter. And uh, I didn't like it. I didn't like it because I didn't understand it. And I remember I paid 50 cents for it. And my brother, uh, Eddie, uh, I, you know, I always call him EJ, but he says, uh, you know, he used to tell me, you know, you have to learn how to get into this music. And, and up until that point, he was really trying to talk to me about it. And I was really into R&B and, and soul and stuff. And, and, uh, and he used to tell me, you know, groups like Earth, Wind and & Fire and Cool in the Gang and some Bar Kays and Brass Construction. He said, man, I know you love that stuff, but you know, there's some jazz influences in there. I'm not, no, 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 no. So yeah, that chord is the sus chord, but they also use a dominant seven here. And, they, and you know, so he kind of brought me in on the side door. And so I got to a point where I said, I'm going out and buy me a jazz record. And I bought this Benny Carter record in the used bin for 50 cents. And, uh, and man, I've listened to it, and I remember telling my brother, I don't, mm -mm. And uh, the, what I was most happy about that whole process is that uh, I didn't tell him how much I paid for it, so I sold it to him for a dollar. So the fact that I got my money back, and you know, and I was like 12, but not only did I get my money back, but I had something extra to buy some candy, so I was good with that, you know. So, but um, but later, of course, I started to to go back and really check it out. But uh, that was my first jazz record. Well, being from the jazz capital of the world, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, Believe it or not, there was a lot of jazz in Milwaukee at that time. And because it being geographically so close to Chicago, a lot of musicians would come through. Um, in fact, my very first uh, jazz concert was with um, Cannonball Adley, and he played in Milwaukee. And uh, I'll never forget, it was 1975. Um, and I wanted to, he, and then he did a master class at UWM, University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. And my brother was a freshman there. And he was at the clinic and I didn't know it, right? Because I was with my high school, so we're, we're you know, uh, we're sitting in the back, we're actually my junior high school at that time. And so uh, he was taking questions. And uh, you know, I raised my hand and I always wanted to sit in with my brother and he used to tell me I was too young. So I said, what do you do if you want to play? And they tell you you're too young. And he turned around and looked because he knew it was me. He was like, you just got to keep playing, baby. You just got to keep playing, you know. Years later, I met Nat, and Nat said he remembered me asking that question. But um, I started, I was hanging out already at jazz clubs and, and um, you know, kind of not sitting in, but just kind of, at that time, you know, you, the older guys would just kind of make you sit in the corner and just kind of chill and pay attention. But then I got a chance to, uh, to play when I was 16 with Sonny Stitt and Red Holloway because they came through doing a single. And, and of course, uh, you know, when you do singles in that situation, you pick up a rhythm section. And the older guys were like, okay, it's your turn. Because the guys who would normally do it, they weren't available. So, and, um, and I saw Red many years later, and he remembered that gig. You know? That's why I'm always talking about relationships and resources and why it's so important for younger musicians to go and make themselves known, or, or, or I should say, avail themselves to the, to, the, to the legends, because people remember that stuff, you know? And, um, but I'll never forget, boy, we played Cherokee, and I couldn't play fast. And it was like, do, 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 do. By the time I got to the bridge, do, do, do. Third courses, I was ready to pull the brushes out, because <laughs> I couldn't play fast, you know? But um, they were very gracious. And uh, I'm very supportive and very loving. So, uh, yeah, well, first paid jazz gig. My first paid gig was actually a classical gig, and uh, I was playing timpani for a Christmas program in an Episcopal church. Now, I'll never forget it because I grew up in a Baptist church. My mother was in the choir. We grew up in church. That was like a you know that's part of who we were. And I remember I was playing timpani, I was getting paid $25. I was 13. And as we were starting the program, 
I'm set ready to play and coming down the aisle were old white men with white robes on and hoods on. And I looked at my mother, I'm like, you gotta get me out of here. Cause I just knew it was the Ku Klux Klan. I'm like, he ain't tell me nothing about this. This ain't worth twenty five dollars. Cause I had already figured out what I was gonna, get, you know, spend all spend it all Christmas gifts. And I saw these guys coming down with these white robes swinging this incense. I'm like, oh lord, get me out of here. But um, I said, you know what? It's got to be something better than jazz. Carl Allen, 